Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tell Me Why, the program for American Airlines team members. It looks at the why behind the news, all the announcements, everything that is going on at the airline season six. My name is Ron DeFeo. I work in the Global Engagement Group here at American. And joining me today, second appearance, first appearance in this role as VP of IOC, That's right. Jessica Tyler. How are you? Hi, doing fantastic. Well, we, Memorial Day, it was only, it was a Last weekend, it feels like 100 years ago, I want to start with a couple of stats before we, we get in here. David Seymour put out a, a note earlier this week. We did not cancel a single mainline flight this weekend. In fact, the streak started before the weekend, remarkable seven days and no cancels, include our regional operation, and this weekend was the best ever Memorial Day weekend for combined completion factor. Also, we achieved our best Memorial Day weekend on-time performance since the merger, and we were the best on time arrival, A14 days of 23 on Saturday. What a great time. How are you feeling? Fantastic weekend. <laughs> Fantastic weekend. The team did an amazing job, really focused on getting customers where they wanted to go this weekend. Yeah. Perfect time for you to be on the shop. Yes, this is, this is yes. great. Although, like we say, we never take any day for granted. We wake up. And honestly, that's the consistency is what we're looking for. So Memorial Day is just another example. If I go back to September, even. Mm -hmm. September, we had history-making completion factor, control of completion factor. You go into Thanksgiving, the holidays, the big winter storms we had. Yeah. We've had a track record now of five months of D0 wow. leading the industry. So we're, we're really focused on putting up those types of results day in, day out. So That's really awesome. excited. And let's start there. When you were on before, you were in cargo. Mm -hmm. Here you are now, IOC, the, the nucleus of the airline, as we like to say. Um, talk a little bit about just what goes on you know, day to day there. I'm sure no two days are the same, but oh, just it's fascinating. a day in the life. It is fascinating. Um, whole new world from where I came from, cargo. Love my cargo team and get to see them every day in the IOC as well. <laughs> but um, the IOC has 17 different distinct functions that make up the one team sure. that really keep the airline going. Um, we coordinate with over 350 airports and teams out across the network, as you know. Um, and what I'd love to do is just walk you through a couple of things. So yeah. Crew scheduling, right? They are looking after and, and coordinating and monitoring 4,500 pilots and 9,000 flight attendants every day. Mm -hmm. Their whereabouts, issues they're having, hotels, transportation, yeah. making sure that we keep the airline moving that way. If I go to um, our customer service managers that sit on the bridge, the system customer service managers, they're looking out over 200 groups of 20 or more a day that they're keeping an eye on. Um, they're also watching out for un unaccompanied minors. On an average day during the year, you might see three or 400 unaccompanied minors just through Dallas. Wow. During the summer, that can get up to 800 wow. unaccompanied minors going through Dallas a day. If you look at what our dispatch team is, they're working on thousands of flight plans with our pilots, mm. making sure the routes and weather and alternates and everything's safe for a really safe journey. Our central load planning team is in, in the IOC. Um, they are looking at weight and balance down to the nth degree to make sure it, we run safe, but we also are optimizing our assets and, and utilizing the space we have down below for bags and cargo. Um, if I think about cargo, speaking of cargo, um, they work with ATC. Last month alone, I think we moved 69 life-saving medevac flights. Unbelievable. Um, coordinated through our cargo team with air traffic and flight and other, other groups that are involved with that. So just a, a fascinating, yeah. fascinating place where everything comes together to keep the airline moving. No, that's great. And as we've talked about this year, and we've been talking about the operational plan right now, three buckets, we're planning, executing, and recovery. Yep. And we've, as we've heard from different leaders, would love your take on this. You know, from the IOC point of view, let's start just with the planning and the executing. Talk a little about your approach and, you know, why you think this might be working. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So we're, I don't know, 150 some odd days into 2023. Hard to believe. We've had over 200 official IROPS events already this year. <laughs> um, on an average day in the IOC, we're working two, two IROPS events. Any, any two hubs, two locations that are, you know, things are firing up. Um, one of the most important things as we look at plan, execute, recover, the planning piece. Mm -hmm. And how do you know you're planning the right strategies? How do you know we're getting better? So it's been a really big focus of ours is to say, we want to be a learning organization where we, with 200 events, you know, even just so far this year, we can learn a lot yeah. and we can keep getting better. So we have a couple of really key things going on right now. One is our IOC analytics team is really working across groups 
to create this objective backdrop to the conversations we have every week on. We have a, a weekly debrief about the IROPs that happened in the last week. And in that session, we're looking at this objective data. What did we know? When did we know it? What really happened? What decisions did we make? When did we make them? What did we? What were the outcomes that happened for customers, for the airport, for crew, across the board? And what did we learn? Yeah. And how do we take those learnings and build them back into our playbooks and our strategies going forward? We're really trying to take this um, institutional knowledge that exists. We have incredible experts uh, across this airline, but especially at the IOC, um, that have decades and decades of, of knowledge and experience. When, you know, you ask someone like Suzanne Williamson about a hurricane coming to Miami, she knows exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> right. right. Well, we've got to take the brain of people like that and sure. make it available to everybody so that we keep getting better and better. So we're trying to t- take those learnings, build them back into our playbooks mm-hmm. and have an objective view working with all of the teams that are involved. We work really closely with the airport that experience the IROPs. They come mm-hmm. to those meetings and we debrief from all the different perspectives to see how we can keep getting better. Yeah, that's great. So those are really the, the playbooks, the, the IROPs dashboard, this mm-hmm. objective backdrop to our conversations and just that learning cycle um, is one of the things that's I think is really helping us plan and, and recover faster. No, that's great. And yeah. on the recovery, you talk about IROPs, yeah. just the focus on emphasis around, okay, we know things are going to happen, but when it happens, how do we recover quickly? Yep. You know, talk a little about that change and just that focus. Yeah, that it, it plays off, you know, the, the the thing we just talked about in terms of the dashboards and the learning and the mm-hmm. the playbooks, but it even goes into the to, to the different teams and people. We started a new role um, within the last couple of years called an IROPS lead. And these are, ad, it's an ad hoc role that we add when we are planning for or seeing that something's coming. So yeah. during the summer, we plan them every day. <laughs> um, and that IROPS lead is working across the groups with the airports, all the teams to really um, play out scenarios. We know something's coming and just because it's in the forecast doesn't mean it's going to happen. So there's, you know, we're looking at is, if it hits on time, if it hits a little early, if it hits a little late, what are the different scenarios and strategies that we can take to minimize the disruption for customers and for our crew and aircraft too? And so we take that experience, that lead looks at our tools. You've heard a lot about heat, right? I think heat is a little bit like Madonna or Prince. It doesn't need it. You know, you don't even need to know what heat. it stands for, right? Um, we've talked a lot about heat. It allows us to try to delay or slow down the airline. Um, to avoid cancels. Um, We have tools like crew recovery that fixes. So when you delay an airline, when you delay all these flights, Mm -hmm. um, or in the event where we actually have to take strategic cancels, you break a lot of stuff. Crew's not where they're supposed to be. Aircraft's not where it's supposed to be. Crew recovery is a tool that we use to fix things, right? And the better those tools are, the more reliable they are when they work work when we need them to work, but they also solve the majority of our problems. And they solve them effectively, meaning... Sometimes when we manually repair something, we might actually be causing more problems Hmm. the next day, right? So these tools really help us manage those problems and fix those problems, not only more automated in a quicker way, but also in a more effective way. And so when you have the right people or right smarts and the, the great experience that our teams bring to it with the right tools, we can really get crew and aircraft and especially our customers back on track more quickly. So it's really a combination of all those things that help us see things like, so since Memorial Day, we had um, events, diversion events in both Miami and Dallas. Fun uh, to come back in after Memorial (laughs) Day and (laughs) face with that. But really both stations were able to have, um, meet their goals on right start the next day. That's a huge sign and a huge difference to maybe in our past where, an event like either one of those from earlier this week would have would have really bled into multiple days yeah. in terms of recovery. And and we're, we're really focused on starting the next day clean and fresh so that, that our people, our aircraft, our maintenance planners are getting things where they need to be to, to be touched and, and working and ready to go um, so that we can keep customers, you know, on their way. That's great. Last question, kind of back to where we began. Memorial Day was great. But as we talked about, it's about consistency. Wake up every day, the scoreboard's new. Yep. What are you, talk a little about what you and the team are, are doing to ensure the momentum keeps rolling, stay focused, and, you know, why, why do you feel good about the summer? Yeah, I feel really optimistic. Look, summer's going to be hard. It always is. High load factors, the weather, um, travelers that only travel one time, and this is it, right? And, and so there's just a lot of opportunity for continued disruption. But I feel really like we learned a lot from last summer. 
We've worked on the plan. We're ready to go. Um, and the the mantra of the team right now is we want to we're we're trying to build a winning franchise, mm-hmm. not just have a winning season. So great that we had a good Memorial Day weekend. Yep. But when I strung all those things back to September together, we're trying for consistency in our results. We want to be a franchise that is known for winning, known for reliability, so that our our crew and our customers can count on us every day, not just occasionally. And so that's the deal. We, we've got this incredible momentum coming back from off of last September all the way to now. Um, the proof is there that we are seeing more consistency in our results. Great. And that's the game plan for the summer is to keep playing our game and keep winning. There it is. Yeah. We're Jessica, ready. Jessica, Tyler, IOC. Perfect timing. Summer's here. Fabulous. We'll yep. have to definitely keep tabs yeah. on this as it rolls along in, in, in throughout the entire year. Well, if this is it, tell me why. You know where we live. We live on JetNet in video form. You can download us as a podcast form if you want. Wherever you get your podcasts, maybe a SoundCloud, Apple, you name it, we are there. For American Airlines team members, like I said, we'll be definitely keeping tabs on the operations that roll through the summer and throughout the balance of the year. But if you have other things you want to hear about, learn about, know about, visit our JetNet page, drop us a line, and we will look to get an expert like Jessica on the program and hopefully answer your questions and tell you why we do what we do. That's it. Thanks for joining. We'll see you on the next episode of Tell Me Why.